welcome back um, to my channel if you are new here please subscribe please like it's actually free and to my returning subscribers thank you so much for keep on watching my channel i'm sorry about my voice um i'm actually a bit feverish because i think it's because of the change of seasons that's why um my voice is like this and also i think everybody's voice in the morning is otherwise but anyway i uh, just thought i should come here i'm sorry if you're gonna hear any sounds it's actually raining um here where i am so i'm actually preparing for work and then i'm done and i was done early so i still have like 20 minutes to spare uh so i just thought i should come here check up uh on you guys and catch up i guess so um i had an idea of shooting a video that was gonna talk about um so basically on monday is my birthday <laughs> so monday is my birthday i turned 30 i was born in 1990 on the 24th of february uh for those that have not watched my get to know me tag i was born in wet bank in Pumalanga province, Bitbank is now called Emalasheni, which is a mining town and and all of those things, nice things. So basically, um, I thought I should come here and sort of share. I thought I'd write down a list of thirty things I've learned in in like my thirty years in this world. But I think the list was not going to be so genuine i think so i just thought uh i should just come here and share my experiences so um i think everybody when we were growing up i think when i was in grade one i wanted to be um a pilot at some point and i think everybody wanted to be a pilot and then and then as things went by like i said i come from a mining town so i think if you come from a mining town or wheat bank you always inclined to wanting to do um either electrical engineering mechanical engineering uh or or mining anything that has to do with uh mining so then i wanted to do geology because it was i i i was very intrigued very interested in the process that comes into discovering minerals and whatnot so i wanted to do geology and then um I actually got accepted at UJ and everything was nice and whatnot but something happened that sort of I, then I had to leave UJ and then go back home then I, was, I started going into I wanted to do metallurgy now so then I decided okay metallurgy was the next option but then I just I just couldn't go in I wrote tests and everything but things were just not working out and I was very like I was very sad at the time and I felt very depressed because also my sister my baby sister was born in 2009 and that's the year when like a lot of, all of these things were going on and tried to get into tut and, and all of that so basically i can say i was home for that year and then um then people were like oh yeah she came back because of uh the fact that she has a child so people i don't i think people didn't know that my mom was expecting which they don't need to know fairly uh so People thought that the child was mine and that's the reason why I came back after going to UJ for like a few months so uh, then they assumed that I had a baby and that's the reason why and there's still people that I think believe uh, Zanu is like my baby sister is my child but I really don't care so um, I don't know how this thing ended up being about my career and whatnot but then I moved from them I I went, like I said, I come from a mining town. So then the school that I went to had a mine, um, mine, whatnot. So then the mine approached the school and said that they would like to send some kids to school. Uh, it's going to be free, everything and whatnot. And then because I happened to be one of the top students at my school, then I got contacted. They're like, oh, are you interested? But then my teachers were like, yeah, but the problem is uh, you're not going to be doing um, uh, anything science or mining or whatnot related you would do a uh, business administration and you can just decide what you major in and then i was like mm, what's going on and then at the time i was like job hunting looking for apprentice to like maybe be a learner to get a learnership 
at a mine or whatever and then i was in the process of getting a, a train assistant job at transnet so then um I was, I was doing that process and then now there's this process that came through and then um i sent everything and they're like okay no you accepted it you can go do the business management business administration sorry and then uh now i had to sit with my parents down and say okay there's this thing that the transit one that's looking very positive and it looks like i'm gonna get the the job anyway uh and then there's this offer for me to go study for three years so um financially it makes sense for me to actually take the the job because i was going to get paid but going to varsity i wouldn't get paid or anything like that so um my my mom was like oh no take the job my mom loves money guys yo <laughs> there's no way so then uh my dad was like no you're not gonna take uh the job you're gonna go to school and if you meant to work at transit you will always go back but then i felt like oh, this guy it's killing my vibe i was gonna have a car soon everything is gonna bowl and whatnot but then um i was like okay no time i went to school i went um i went to it was a virtually a uh, free school which was called cedar city campus some people may know it some people may not know it but then now they shut it down because there was like uh, some issues and whatnot but then uh yeah i went to i went to cedar and then when i got there it was business um there was accounting there was economics and think about it i have been doing uh biology biology is life sciences geography physical science mathematics and then now i get there the last time i did accounting was in grade nine and that was like years ago and then i get them i try i try and navigate and then we, the first test that we wrote was an accounting test did home girl not get 10 percent 10 percent guys and i was like what what the hell is wrong and then um i was I, i'm so grateful because the lecturer because when i went to go pick up my scripts and then the lecturer called me he's like um you need to understand that you're not like everybody else most of the people that are here they've done accounting up until matric and you have not done um you have not done accounting in a very long time so you'd need to put in more effort compared to them he's like yeah um, and then there was a guy what was his name kenneth kenneth was like no then when he also saw my my my, tra- my transcript the the script he's like oh you, you, you're struggling and i was like yeah no um and then he's like no it's fine i'll help you with accounting and i was like oh okay that's fine and then he started helping me started like helping me and like i could see i had a better understanding now of accounting you know like i could do you know things and then i improved from there and he really really helped me i think like him and the lecturer sort of helped with my self-esteem and whatnot because i probably would have lived like if things continued like that i was gonna leave go back to go to uj because now whatever that was the problem then had been solved and then i was like okay and then i worked really hard and then but by the, by, I think it's by the grace of God and I think also the dedication that I put in, I never failed anything. I never I passed my accounting in first semester and then throughout my three years, I passed and yeah, I, I managed to graduate on record time. And then I was lucky because the, the university that I'm telling you about was working with a company called T-Systems South Africa, which is an... Um, information communication technology company um originally from germany and then they had uh, something called ict academy where they were like training people to do sap a plus and n plus and whatnot so then i went uh, and then i did i did um icdl and i did a plus and n plus uh you know just so that i can up my skills and then the worst happened after my varsity i was like my marks were looking good and people were getting like graduate programs internships and whatnot and it was dry for me it was like really really dry i was trying and then i had some money saved up because i had a leadership in like um the ict academy was sort of like a leadership as well so then they were giving us money so then i had money saved up by the end of the year and then because i was like i'm not gonna go sit uh, in Whitbank 
for for that year so i'm not gonna like while i job hunt so then i took my money and then luckily thank god the way i studied at cedar they still would allow you to stay like they would allow you to stay if you got a job then they'd allow you to stay for three months like while you you like you find your feet then i was not working but i still i still went back to varsity and then i was just job hunting job hunting and then i think by the third month um my money was running out now when i spoke to my dad i was like oh, this is what is going on my money is running out and i've not my dad was like um i can only give you money for two months if things don't work out you need to come home because if you're home if we're eating up and eggs you're gonna eat that and whatnot and I worry, worry, and I was like, okay, no, it's fine. And then the last month, so then my friend was already working at T Systems at the time. She's like, oh no, there's internships and whatnot. Uh, then I tried to apply, it was just not working. The website was just not allowing me. So my friend's like, no, it's fine. Let me do it for you. She did everything. My friend, my Sabata, she did that. I love that girl so much. So then she applied for me. Then. In, I think in two days I got a call and they did a telephonic interview after the telephonic interview then they called me for an interview when I went for the interview I was on time I was early like in all of the interviews that I've been to I've never been late I always try I try to go there like two hours before like three hours before so that if anything happens if there's traffic if there's whatever I know that I'm covered so then I, I went and, I, and then after the interview, then I asked them, oh, when are you going to get back to me? They're like, oh, maybe in, in, in two weeks time. So I packed my bags and I went back to Bumalang because also the time I created with my dad was over now. So then I, I packed my things and then I went back home. The next day after I got home, they called me, they're like, oh, congratulations, you got the job. And I was like, yes, that's nice. And then they're like, yeah, but uh, you're starting tomorrow and i'm like excuse me i'm starting tomorrow i mean Pumalang, they're like yeah you need to be here at eight eight years and then so we call my dad my dad was at work we call my dad we're like ah so to room seven zin and whatnot my dad is like okay no it's fine he's gonna uh after he knocks off he's gonna come and then we'll pack stuff and then i'll go back to job work um and then when my dad was on his way you know the devil works he eh? works over time so when my dad was coming from work then his tire just went out like his tire yeah puma and she was he was driving and then he, he says he could feel that the car was like doing weird things and then he saw his will like his will like in front of him and then he stopped so then now my now now my dad now the car had to be towed and whatnot and then luckily we had a family uh, friend that was staying close by so then we went to tell them that uh, i need to go to job and then they're like no it's fine we'll go in the morning you know so then yeah i went in the morning and then i got there my first job so nervous and whatnot because i had not been in corporate or anything like that but i really enjoyed that it was like one of the best times of my life and i learned a lot and i think my character was really um um well shaped uh by working at uh t systems because i worked at the service desk service desk was like a call center but we were servicing like um other customers with that calling if they want passwords resets and whatnot so then it taught me a lot of patience because naturally i'm i'm not so patient as a person but that job really taught me patience it taught me uh perseverance it was really hard and also i had to like pick myself up and um really really um know that i it's not it's not the kind of job i wanted for myself there was more to it then i started applying and i applied i remember one day it was the last day of the applications for graduate programs at transnet free trail and then i just applied for it and then i was like ah oh, transnet is such a big organization i'm sure there's like 30 other people or like a thousand other people that have applied continued with my life everything went well and whatnot and then uh, i think like two weeks after was it two weeks a month after i applied because they said if you don't hear from us within two weeks or is it 30 days i don't remember but the time that they said you if you don't hear from us then consider your application unsuccessful passed and then i was like okay it's whatever life goes on at least i still have a job and then they actually call me later so they tried to call me because i was working shifts when i was working at t system so sometimes i just 
I don't know why I also did that. I switched off my phone when I'm supposed to sleep. Maybe I'm coming from night shift and all that. So then I woke up, I got a missed call, and this lady's like, oh, this is, mm -mm -mm. I'm from this company, but not. So I was like, oh, and she's like, please call me back on this number. And the call is like, yeah, just wanted to invite you for an interview and whatnot. Uh, would you be able to come through? And then, and then I went for an interview and the interview went well. Um, I think I'm lucky because like I said, where I studied, which was Cedar City Campus, we had a program where they taught you how to to like do interviews, you do mock interviews and whatnot. So I, I can fairly say that I have never failed an interview Maybe I have, but I'm well vested with um, doing interviews. So then uh, the interview went to well. I felt very optimistic. I looked good as well, you know, and not. And then after that, then it went quiet. I was like, what's going on? And then they called again. They're like, okay, now you need to come in to do an assessment. I mean, I've, I've written so many assessments before because there was a possible job at Unilever and whatnot. So I was like, I, I had done assessments before. I understood how they were. And also because when I was doing uh, the whole process for train assistant at Transnet, I actually um, think it. Um, did assessment so it was not such a big deal for me so now into the assessments after the assessments I passed them and then now I was like oh we did medicals after medicals I was like oh, it is what it is if you do medicals according to everybody you've already got the job so I was like oh I got the job and whatnot my time is running out now I need to leave so then I got the job and uh, then I started it was nice it was a uh, great two years of learning and that's when I actually fell in love with um, freight and uh, and all of that so this video was not supposed to be about my career but it ended up being about my career and I'm just gonna stop there and say that's that working at Translate for that two years was a time when I fell in love with freight and I could never trade it for anything else in the world and so yeah so thank you so much for watching and taking your time out i thought i should just um come here with a lighter note of a video instead of always talking about fibroids i know that the intention of the channel was to talk about fibroids but i would want to expand and also um attract more people into the channel uh, so that's why i just decided i'm just gonna um do more things that don't only revolve around um uh fibroids so basically thank you so much for coming thank you for watching thank you for taking your time and please do um like share comment, and maybe you can also just share your career journey with me uh and anyway thank you so much